Hello, what's up? Gleb Alexandrov here for CreativeShrimp.com. Welcome to yet another very exciting tutorial. Noise is a hallmark of path tracing render engines, especially in case of interior 3D scenes or volumetric effects or 3D scenes with shallow depth of field with lots of out of focus bokeh. Tracing thousands of rays and making those rays converge to produce a clear image is an inherent part of how cycles and other path tracing engines work. So naturally, the dream of anyone who has ever rendered stuff with cycles is to have a magic button that would allow to fast track this process and render, say, 10 samples and let the neural network dream the rest of the picture. And while banner default denoising works reasonably well in many cases, the AI-powered solutions have started to pop up. I mean, this is the beginning of the new era. Keep watching. So today we're gonna to be taking a look at Denoise Add-on by Remington Graphics that brings NVIDIA Optics AI accelerated denoiser to Blender. But before going any further and getting overexcited, uh, because that's the NVIDIA technology, it is compatible only with NVIDIA GPUs. Alright, so Optics is the AI accelerated denoiser. The artificial intelligence part means uh, that this denoiser uses deep neural network that has been trained on thousands of renders of different 3D scenes, both noisy and high quality, and it learned to take a noisy input and produce a noiseless still image. The quality of the final result is the essential part of the equation because denoise always comes at a cost. Uh, the processed images end up looking blotchy or smeared. Deep learning is meant to make it less prone to such effects, at least in theory, because there is no silver bullet, blah blah blah. Alright, first let's download and install the Denoise add-on. Go over to remingtongraphics.net, website, tools, Denoise, and I'm gonna grab the 2.8 version because I finally switched to 2.8, woo! -hoo! So download, save file, don't forget where you put it. Then I'm gonna jump over to Blender, go edit, use the preferences, or just press Ctrl Alt U. And in the add-ons tab, I will hit install button and navigate to the folder with the zip archive and click install add-on from file. Then it's just a matter of activating the checkbox near the add-on and we have to install optics binaries. The optics binaries are licensed not under GPL, so we have to download them separately. Alright, once it's download, don't forget to save user preferences to make sure the Blender remembers uh, that you have installed this add-on. Alright, and after we did all of that, we can find the add-on in the View Layer tab. We will find it just below the default denoise and add-on. It has a bunch of settings that we can tweak and we will talk about it later. Oh, so that's pretty much it for the install part and we can start using it. I think I'll stick to the lower number of render samples because that's the whole point of denoising, I think. And also I'd like to see some metadata burned into image, so I will activate this checkbox in the metadata tab. Namely, I would like to see the render time. Maybe I'm missing something obvious, but I haven't found where you can show the render samples. But anyway, if we really like to see samples, we can use the custom node. Mm -hmm. Okay, here is a raw rendering of our scene, and if you want to download it, go over to blender.org slash download slash demo files. I'll also put the link to this exact version in the description. I designed the lighting in such a way that it produces lots and lots of bounced lighting noise, so hopefully it will be a good playground for testing the denoising algorithms. I'm switching over to some other render slot, and back to the view layer tab, uh, let's first activate the Blender default denoising, just for the sake of comparison. Uh, I will leave it at the default settings and render out the image. I would say for 10 samples it does a pretty good job at denoising the image, but obviously it's not perfect. It obviously doesn't have enough info to work with. Uh, this type of noise that we've set up, the noise that comes from the bounced lighting, uh, the noise that comes from uh, having the tiny light source and the volumetric fog noise on top of it, that's just too much. And cranking up the strength of the denoiser up to one won't help us to remove the blotchiness either. Let's now go ahead and switch over to the denoise add-on and see how it looks. I'm gonna activate denoise and leave all other settings at their default values. Go ahead and render out the image. Doo -doo -doo -doo. And once it finishes rendering... Bam! Damn it! look at this, the algorithm dreamt the rest of the picture, kind of. 
Obviously, it's not perfect either, but in my opinion, it's much more usable. And it exports the denoised image as a separate image. And to get back to the render result, you need to navigate to it. And it makes it pretty hard to compare the denoised versions of the renderers and stuff like that. But what you can do is use this icon to toggle on and off the denoised version. And a great thing about it is that it uses GPU to run the processing, so it takes just a few seconds to process that 1080p image. But again, to be fair, it works only on NVIDIA GPUs, that's something to keep in mind. Alright, I'm gonna be saving all the images in their respective folders and then load it into PureRef. This way we'll be able to keep track of our images and compare them later on. Alright, so this is default, save as image. So here is the default denoiser and this is optics. I wonder what do you think about it? Leave your comment below. I think that while the optics version looks a little bit stylized, overall it's much more plausible, especially in the darker areas, but not limited to that. And the default denoising is 9 seconds and this is 5 seconds, but it doesn't factor in the actual time that it takes to process the image, so it's about 7 seconds. Not too much of a difference. Alright, let's take a look at some more functions of denoise add-on. What we can do is activate the denoiser right from the image tab by pressing this button. Basically, it will use the settings from the view layer tab and just apply it. Technically, that means that you can run any kind of image through the denoising. You just need to load it in as an image. Next, I'm gonna try something crazy. I'm gonna set the render samples to 1. That's the minimum amount of samples you can have. And now I'm gonna click on the quick denoise button and look at this! I think it's pretty impressive, not only because it looks uh, like a frame from a stylized movie or a concept art even, but also because it filled in the blanks pretty well. If we quickly compare it to the default denoising, we will see that uh, the default algorithm just breaks at these extreme values. And in this particular example, the difference of algorithms really shine through. Next, I will set the render samples to 50 and I want to showcase the use HDR training checkbox. First, let's render out the image without uh, this checkbox enabled. It takes 2 to 3 seconds to process. And now let's tick the use HDR training checkbox. Presumably, that will tell Optics to use the high luminosity values uh, training data. That could potentially lead to better results with the high luminosity values scenes, obviously. And what you can tell by comparing two images with and without HDR checkbox enabled is that the HDR version looks a little bit darker, just at the first glance, and a little bit more contrasted, I would say. But other than that, the difference is quite minimal with 50 samples. But if we test it on one sample, we will see a different picture. The HDR version is a lot darker, but at the same time, it's less wavy and dreamy. Do you know what I mean? It seems to me that in the non-HDR version, Optics tries to imagine the, the rest of the scene, and thus creates lots of artifacts. Okay, folks, next let's take a look at 3000 samples ground truth image, and how the various denoise algorithms handle it. And here is the shocking news. In this particular scene, Optics didn't recognize the noise at 3000 samples threshold, and on the contrary, at 3000 samples, Blender default denoiser produced silky smooth, absolutely noiseless image. That is pretty surprising. I'm gonna zoom in a little bit. Let's take a look at the blowed up versions. Here you can see that the Blender default denoising does a really, really good job. It really shines in this particular use case. And we can also see that 3000 samples without denoising for this type of scene is nearly not enough to get a production ready image. Okay, one more feature that really made me happy is use extra passes. To show a difference, first I'm gonna make a render without it. It was rendered at just 10 samples, so unsurprisingly the fine details in the textures are gone. Now let's go ahead and enable use extra passes checkbox and hopefully it will help to maintain the fine details in the diffuse textures. Once we enabled it, you can see that something happened with the compositor tab the extra layers appears out of nowhere. So basically what happened is that now Optics will take the extra passes like diffuse color pass into account. That means preserving fine details and maybe introducing some extra artifacts, but in this case you can see that it works pretty much perfectly. Once again, it's just miserable 10 samples. So 
take a look at these textures, especially uh, at the book title and at the euros. I wonder if you agree with me, uh, just 10 samples, that looks extremely impressive. And here are the three sample renders. How about that? Of course, the lighting has been screwed and so on, but that remains to be useful for the previews, especially considering the fact that it takes just a few seconds to render. And how about animation? Simply put, optics is meant to be used with still images. Of course, technically, we can use it for whatever purpose we want, but it works really well in the case of still images and it produces lots and lots of chattering and other type of artifacts in case of animations. For example, here I created a little bit of a fly-through animation and also I animated the light source. So it should be a double nightmare for denoising. It almost physically hurts. Here is a 10 samples animation with optics enabled. And by the way, I use optics and denoise interchangeably throughout the tutorial, as you've noticed. Now let's take a look at 50 samples version. Slightly better, but lots of chattering nevertheless. I must admit it looks pretty cool as a stylized effect, but unusable in production. Sadly, the Blender default denoiser doesn't look any better. Not much of an improvement, if any. It's blotchy instead of chattery. That's all the difference. Well, we see some improvement when the Use Extra Passes feature is enabled, but it's still, you know, far from perfect. And now at this point of the tutorial, I desperately wanted to tell a thing or two about how denoising applies to out-of-focus, bokeh effects and stuff like that. But the red car, it was a stark contrast to the almost grayscale images surrounding it. So I couldn't help but go with the flow. I opened the image. Because of the lo-fi, broken lens effects, it was almost impossible to tell the true color of the Cadillac. But there was a dead body and it was me. It was pretty unsettling. But I thought, you can denoise even images like this. But apparently, no algorithms could work in this twilight zone. I must admit, I panicked a little bit. I was trying to make it work. But no luck. I thought maybe it was lens distortion to blame or the post-processing chain in general, but suddenly it started to work again. Monsters are real and ghosts are real too, they live inside us and sometimes they win. But let's not forget that rendering the images with lots of out-of-focus elements requires enormous amount of samples. For example, cranking up the render samples to 3000 won't help in case of this scene to get a clear image. And thus, denoising becomes not a matter of saving some time, but a matter of life and death. The ray tracing noise comes in different flavors and packages, and some situations are much harder to denoise than the others. For example, this scene with tiny streaks of light and volumetric material is a nightmare to render because it features many types of noise, and that makes me appreciate the deep learning based algorithm of optics even more. First, I'm going to enable some render passes in the view layer tab, like shadow, volume, diffuse, glossy, direct and indirect, say for debug purposes. Now I'm hitting F12 to render it out, and what we can do next is go over to this tab and choose render layer. Now we can preview the separate render layers and see what kind of noise uh, each render pass produces. For example, here is the diffuse direct pass. You can see how the light rays hit the surface and already produce some noise. And then we have the diffuse indirect pass. Uh, that is much worse because it has all the bounced lighting. But uh, on the other hand, this is kind of a uniform noise. And uh, here we have the glossy, direct, glossy, indirect, which again is a mess, but also kind of a uniform. And then we have the volume direct pass. And it's a completely different type of noise, a non-uniform particle, sort of, or fireflies. And I can even see the CS, creative shrimp letters over there. And uh, this symbol again. It reminds me that monsters are real and ghosts are real too. And apparently noise is real too if you use the path tracing render engine. Whoa. So traditionally denoising this type of noise is too much to ask for. But again, optics denoiser seems to handle this type of noise pretty darn well. Uh, just look how it connected the dots or filled the blanks. It really looks like this neural network type of denoising here is completely different from the traditional solutions. Just for comparison, this is the default Blender denoising. It 
does a pretty good job, but it's nowhere as close to filling the gap uh, type of denoising. Then we compare the images side by side, the difference becomes pretty striking. And by the way, this is the Pure Ref software, the free and open source tool for viewing and organizing images, and you can find that tutorial about Pure Ref on my channel. All right, and here, just for the sake of comparison, is 1200 samples ground truth image, which is noisy as hell, but on the other hand, it doesn't show any kind of artifacts. But anyway, optics denoiser looks very convincing in this example. As a quick aside, surprisingly, too much denoising can hurt the image quality and make all kinds of denoising patterns evident. In turn, uh, this makes the image look artificial and overprocessed. And what I usually like to do is bring back some noise by uh, mixing it with the original render, or even better, by adding a layer of uh, real film grain uh, on top of the render. I will leave a link to this grain file in the description if you would like to try this method. I just used Krita to open up this uh, grain image and blend it in with the original one by using the overlay blending mode. You can see how it helps to break up the overly smooth artificial look of the denoised image. It just brings back the charming natural imperfection of ray traced rendering, if that makes sense. So here is something to keep in mind when dealing with optics or any kind of denoiser. And the last case for today that I really wanted to show is particles and denoising. If you think about it, particles, especially the uniformly distributed particles, are kind of a noise. And so I was very interested to know what kind of result can we expect from denoising that kind of image. First I'm going to turn on the Blender default denoising and see how it goes. Yeah, uh, a little bit splotchy for my taste. Uh, let's now see how denoise would help in this case. Mm -hmm. And... It looks a little bit artistic like a paint effect or something like that, but in my opinion it gives a slightly better approximation of the final look, I would definitely go with this one. Now I can try increasing the blend factor a bit, and I think that looks even more faithful to, to the imaginary final render. By the way, are you familiar with 2 Minute Papers YouTube channel by Carol Jordan and Fahir? If not, check it out, it's an amazing source of knowledge about neural networks, artificial intelligence and stuff like that. So as the author of the channel loves saying, uh, what a time to be alive. Thanks for watching, that was Gleb Alexandrov, kudos to Declan Russell and Deep Blender for their contribution to the development of this add-on, and oh my goodness, everyone, follow Deep Blender on Twitter for neural network related work, as they say, using deep learning to improve Blender, how cool is that? And of course, make sure to check Grant Wilk's website and YouTube channel, Remington Graphics. He has some amazing tutorials and stuff. Alright folks, I'm gonna put the denoise add-on link in the description. Feel free to show your magically denoised render on Twitter using B3D hashtag or tag me personally. Drink more coffee and we'll change the world of computer graphics.